For today's video, we're going to talk about a compilation of SAP questions. I've called it SAP question bucket number one that involves SAP data medium exchange, XML DME tree, as well as payment medium output. I will be using my blog post for this video. I will leave the link down in the description box below so you can always refer to that for guidance. Most of these questions have originally been asked on the YouTube channel and some of them have been asked as well through email. We're going to start off with an overview of the questions. Number one question is, is there an SAP DME tree template for SEPA underscore CT and SEPA underscore DD? Second question is, how do you connect F110 or the payment run to a specific DME XML template? Next question, the third one is, in SAP DME, what is the purpose of the conversion function. Fourth question is, while creating company code and house bank, the level indicated in the DME node is two. Why can't it be in level zero for DME XML file output? Next question is, in SAP DME, how do reference IDs work? Lastly, we have, what is the use of the FPM underscore SEPA structure fields XMLNS and XSI in the SAP DME tree properties format attributes tab. This is quite a handful question, but I will include some sort of screenshots to help you guys visualize easier. Let's get started with the questions. First off, we have Is there an SAP DME tree template for the following formats? My answer is yes, there are existing templates for those formats and they are provided by SAP. I did include the related SAP notes, you can refer to these links. And it is of course important to ensure that you search for the latest updates on these SAP notes, especially for the formats you are concerned with. Make sure to read and pay special attention to the attachments, so on and so forth. At the end of the day, it is really good practice to go to the formal SAP documentation and make sure you're up to date and you're seeing the whole picture. For those of you who have watched my previous DME videos, you might be wondering why I started from scratch instead of starting with the template provided by SAP. I wanted you guys to understand the configuration a bit more from scratch because it's possible that you will be dealing with other formats aside from these ones. It is possible that you may need to create a DME tree from scratch. And if you do need to create that DME from scratch, it really does help to look at an example where we're creating the DME tree from top to bottom and of course we're creating these associations we're doing some sort of visualization that okay this configuration will show this type of output in the XML file next question is how do you connect f110 to a specific DME XML template for example we have different payment methods let's say check credit card you name it in the payment run and we want each payment method to trigger a corresponding DME XML template. So this is a really big question and I have decided to include alternative versions of the question. First off is how do you generate multiple payment medium output files in one payment run? The second is how do you generate multiple DME template output files in one payment run? The last alternative would be how do you attach or link the DME file in FBZP or in the payment program configuration? To do this, I have specified the steps below, but basically we're focusing on this uh, screenshot. If we go to transaction code FBZP, focus on the payment methods and country settings, you want to be able to navigate to the specific country and payment method in concern, and then navigate to this payment medium section. This is the screenshot below. You'll notice that SEPA underscore CT has been specified as the format for this specific setting, which is use payment medium workbench. So by specifying the format over here, you've basically done the linkage. I did include further explanation over here down below. 
mentioning that for each payment method per country, there is an entry where you can specify the payment medium format, which is this setting over here. And I have also emphasized that this is a one-is-to-one -one setting, meaning one payment method per country is to one payment medium format. And as long as you indicate the payment methods in your payment run or the F110 parameters, it should be able to pull the corresponding DME configuration that you have set. This is of course considering that you've done the DME tree, you've done the configurations for that one, and that your FBZP configurations are, are accurately configured. The main point of this question is to establish a linkage, and we have done that by specifying the SEPA underscore CT format over here. Next question is, in SAP DME, what is the purpose of the conversion function? I did include an SAP help document for you guys. It is linked over here. As a high-level explanation, this function allows you to convert data to the needed format in your DME file. So I have included a screenshot below. And we're focusing on the conversion function setting over here. We have specified AR.2. Now, if you click on this, you'll see some sort of button here where you can select or do a selection. You'll see the following entries over here. In the screenshot, we see that AR.2 conversion function will show or output this type of, of amount. So we have the right justified amount and the number of decimal places, so on and so forth. By setting the AR2 conversion function, this means that when the payment medium file is generated, the data pulled for the amount node, we're currently in the amount node, it should follow the specified conversion format over here. I did include a more technical explanation for this example, I mentioned that when the amount is pulled from structure FPAH, field name RWBTR, it should be converted to the AR.2 format. Aside from looking at the selections, you can of course click on the puzzle icon over here. If we scroll down, you'll see this type of view or this type of setting view. You'll notice that there are a couple of settings that you can specify for example the alignment the decimal formatting if we're talking about the point or the comma the number of decimal places so on and so forth i also want you guys to know that the conversion function is not limited to amounts i just chose this as an example so you get a better overview so it's good for you to explore the list or available options in sap you'll definitely find other conversion options for date time you name it one good thing to note is that you want to prevent errors, so you need to make sure that you do not use the standard conversion function, this one, and a mapping procedure via exit module simultaneously for the exact same node. So this will definitely cause issues with your output or your DME tree. This is also mentioned in the SAP help document that I have linked. Next question is, while creating company code and house bank, the level indicated in the DME node is 2. Why can't payment details be in level 0 for the DME XML file output? This is a really good question and it does need some sort of visualization. So we're going to focus on this screenshot over here and you'll notice that we're here in the DME tree properties and we're focusing on the levels tab. You'll see that the configuration set over here for level 0 is 9999 for the repetition factor, level 1 with 1 repetition factor, and level 2 with 9999 repetition factor. So anything with a 9999 means that, okay, level 0 and level 9 tag details can be expected to repeat multiple times in the file output. If we move on to the next image or the screenshot, you'll see that we've created a DME tree and we're focusing on the house bank node. The house bank node over here has a setting of level number two. This can create confusion. 
why can't we set it to level 0 if level 0 can repeat multiple times? If we go back to the first screenshot, they have the exact same setting. Level 0, 9999. Level 2, 9999. Why do we specify level 2 for house bank if, you know, we can just set it to 0? My explanation for this is that the house bank is maintained at level 2 because in this example, we are considering house bank as part of the payment details or information within the level 1 tab. I made sure to emphasize the word within. At this point, it's good to know that we're talking about a hierarchy or some sort of structure in the DME tree in the file output that we are creating. One way of looking at this is that, again, we're trying to organize the information using that hierarchy so that the other system, quote unquote, the other system or the bank can read the XML file properly. This may be quite vague at the moment, so in order for you to visualize even further, I have created another image. This is a really simple, high-level example of an XML file. You'll notice that in this image, we have the house bank tags over here, and you'll notice that there are indentations over here. You'll see some sort of structure or grouping for these details. For example, Company code, house bank, bank account, so on and so forth are grouped under payment details and the payment details are grouped under document. Another way of looking at this is that you can think of the tags as bags. Okay, so let's say that your document is your suitcase. The document is your whole suitcase. You'll have a mini pouch within your suitcase. Let's say that's your toiletries pouch or your toiletries bag. So within your toiletries bag, you've got your toothbrush, your floss, your toothpaste, you've got cotton buds, so on and so forth. Now that we have that analogy in place, level 0 and level 2 have the exact same settings, but in terms of the XML file, you can think of level 0 as the document tag, level 1 as the payment details tag, and level to as the company code, house bank, bank account tags. This is the simplest explanation that I could provide at the moment and this scenario is pretty much loosely based on the existing standard DME trees for XML. So you can of course refer to this SAP note that I've linked and if you quickly load it in your SAP system, you'll notice that it has the exact same setting. Next question is, in SAP DME, how do reference IDs work? I did talk about this or explain this in a previous DME blog. I have linked it over here. And you can refer to the reference ID of node in the additional information section. But to give you a high-level explanation, the reference IDs allow you to reuse the information later on. So in this example or screenshot, I am in the company code node and I have included a reference ID or named it as REFID1 or REFID1. This means that if I need the company code detail again eventually and some of the other nodes, I can call on the reference ID REFID1 and use it as part of my mapping. I can map to this reference ID and it should pull the detail that I need. For the last question, we have what is the use of the FPM underscore SEPA structure fields XMLNS and XSI in the SAP DME tree properties format attributes tab? We're here in the SAP DME tree properties and we're in the format attributes tab. Previously, we talked about the levels. This time, we're talking about the format attributes. If you click on this field and press F1 on your keyboard, you'll see this pop up from Performance Assistant and you can read through the explanation or the description. Now, the purpose of including this mentioned structure is included in this SAP note that I've linked. Basically, it addresses some issues or concerns in the payment medium file output wherein the attributes steer away from ISO. The same SAP note also talks about the need to include this structure 
in the SEPA underscore CT payment medium format configuration. So that is in transaction code OBPM1. And this is a screenshot below. You'll notice that FPM underscore SEPA is included in this configuration. If this is too technical for you or quite handful to understand, simply think of it as a way to standardize attributes relating to your XML file and prevent frequent modifications to the DME tree. So at the end of the day, ideally, I did emphasize that you want the XML payment medium output file to be utilized as needed and of course to be readable for the banks. The way to ensure that quote-unquote readability is to follow the standardized formatting. We basically covered all of the questions. I do hope that you were able to learn from this. If you have some experiences that you want to share or some learnings that you want to share, it is good to have your insights and it is great to be able to learn from one another. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.